still hot. The four bases guarding their father. According to the book I found at Dunn's place, fans of the sport leave baseballs on Bradwick's tomb to pay their respects. It'd be even better with a skull between the bats. I've never trusted angels. When they fall, they turn into demons. A Celtic cross. Supposedly, the ring keeps the devil at bay by reflecting the sunlight. Really handy at this time of the day. I've always been a New York Warriors fan, although to be honest, they're not what they used to be. Yep, they just haven't been the same without Craig Spano. I found a baseball glove at Joe Dunn's place, a glove signed by a great star, 
I couldn't believe my luck. Joe Dunn met with someone at the diner, close to his gym. Then he took that person to his house, so that he didn't have to live at the cemetery. I would have never guessed the person's identity. I'm John Blackside, private investigator. How's Joe? One question at a time. It's my turn. Your turn. What was your glove doing at Dunn's place? Because Dunn said he was shaking the hornet's nest, that sooner or later they'd come after me, because they wanted to kill me, because he offered me his home. And then... Vanished. Because I waited for him for two days and then they came to get me. Because I had no time to take my glove when I escaped through the window. What did he want from you? And who wants to kill you? One question at a time. How's Joe? What would happen if I told him the truth? Would he lose it? Could I take that chance? Joe Dunn is dead. Murdered. I told you, Joe! How did it happen? A hitman. But he's dead now. Although whoever hired him still hasn't been punished. My turn. Why are you hiding here? Because I, I fear for my life. Because this is the only place where I've, I feel safe. Because Dunn took me to his place, but the guy who ruined my career came to kill us both. Because it's the same bastard that had Joe killed. Our old friend, the surgeon. Mitchell the surgeon? Is he the person behind all of this? That surgeon you mentioned, is he? My turn. I want to know why I should trust you. Do it for Joe Dunn, our common friend. It's my turn. That surgeon that you mentioned, is he in this photo I got here? Ow! Hey! Ah. Hey, that toss was... Both my ear and my self-esteem would hurt for days. But at least I had a new lead to follow. The surgeon. The bastard had avoided my scrutiny by passing as a hospital doctor. But now, all of my senses were on guard. No matter how good the disguise, or how well he hid, I would find him.
So what you're saying is, one, there's a corruption scandal involving all kinds of athletes. Two, our puppet master is a surgeon named Mitchell, a man who happened to fight in the war with Dunn, right? Every lead I've found points to him. Anyway, where was I? Number three, right? Three. Since Dunn was on his trail, Mitchell hired an anteater to get rid of him. Then, since you were also shaking the wasp's nest, he went after you. But the anteater made a mistake, and Mitchell killed him to cover his own tracks. And, wait, four. The key to all this lies with a common friend of Dunn's and Mitchell's, Craig Spenow. Do you really trust him? I think everything he said was true. It adds up and confirms everything I've found so far. Four. No, I mean, five. Dunn was murdered five, I mean, four days after taking Spenno to his house. If that doesn't make him suspect, makes sense, doesn't it? Yeah, it could make sense. Ha! <laughs> Who's the detective now? Let's follow up with the suspects. You told Smirnoff that you're starting to have second thoughts about Yale's innocence. But what about O'Leary? Um, six. O'Leary wouldn't have sent Randall to kill Dunn. He would have dragged him to his basement, given him his little speech, and then killed him himself. Nah, I know O'Leary, and he wouldn't have sent a hitman. He would have taken matters into his own hands. What about Cassidy? Seven, right? I think it's safe to rule out Cassidy as Dunn's murderer. He seems too impulsive to have planned such a twisted crime. Whoever planned the whole thing knew the suicide theory would fall through. So he manipulated the clues to incriminate Yale. Cassidy is too impulsive to pull off such an intricate plan. So you're right. Mitchell is the one pulling the strings. And you know why? Because in novels, the murderer is always someone the detective knows from the beginning. Well, that could be the case in British novels. You know, where everyone in the mansion where the murder took place is a suspect. But this might just be an American whodunit, where the detective doesn't even meet the culprit until the last scene. You mean we still don't know who's pulling the strings? I didn't say that. How did it go with Helen Moore? Uh, I didn't get anything. Even though it started out really well, I asked to interview her along with her boyfriend, Al Stone. Since I'm a big shot, they were happy to oblige. Perfect. Now, time for the interview. I'll go back and forth so you don't get bored. So, who goes first? Here's one for Helen. Dating a boxer can be dangerous. Aren't you afraid that those blows to the head will take a toll on his intellectual capacity? Honey. Take a look at my man, and then look at yourself. You really think I'm with him because of his intellectual capacity? Helen! Write this down. Nothing will change my man. His smarts, manliness, and integrity are all boxing proof. Okay, now... Here's a question for Al. Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Uh... Yeah, I, uh... Nonsense. America has my smile, my figure, and my patriotic love. 
everything else, and I mean everything, belongs to Al. Right, baby? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Moving on. Here's one for both of you. How did you meet? At the party organized by Des- Ow! Who threw the party doesn't matter one bit. What matters is that I saw you and you saw me. Our paths crossed and our lives were changed forever. Now what? Okay, Helen. What can you say about the rumors that claim you were in a relationship with Desmond O'Leary? Oh, honey. It would be such a shame to mention that shady character in your article, wouldn't it? Why? I'm sure your newspaper would hate to fire someone as talented as you. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Okay, one more question, and... Oh. Al, honey, can you answer it? I've got to go say hi to a fan. <laughs> I'll be right back, Mr. Pulitzer. <laughs> Wait. You mean she stopped smiling when that fan showed up? Uh, yeah. Could you describe him for me? I'll be able to show you something as soon as I'm done developing these pictures. And actually, I thought it was odd, too. So while I continued to interview Stone, I managed to take some pictures of Moore and whoever her mysterious fan was. All right, so uh, where were we? Your manager is Frank Cassidy, president of the Boxing Managers Association of New York. According to him, only boxers working with member managers should be allowed to compete. What do you think about that? Cassidy is a great manager, really. No complaints there. And the work he's putting in as president of the association is really valuable. But, I don't know, maybe in this case, Joe Dunn was right. Wait, no. Could you keep that last comment uh, off the record? You know, on the down low. My lips are sealed. In just 12 days, the contender will try to steal your belt. Any thoughts on your fight against Yale? Well, supposedly the odds are in my favor, but there is no such thing as a weak rival. And, you know, Bobby Yale might be young and going through a rough patch, but he's had a, an amazing streak, so I'll do my best. Are you ever jealous about sharing your sweetheart with America? Well, I, I wouldn't say I'm jealous, but... I know that someone so popular and honest can draw the wrong kind of attention. There are plenty of people who would love to put an end to our career, so it's not easy. Let's get that picture taken. Turn around and show me those biceps from behind. Like that? That's it. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. All right, so uh, where were we? Let's get that picture taken. Turn around and show me those biceps from behind. Like that? That's it. Wait, I, I accidentally moved. Stand still. I'll take another one. What's with me today? Don't move, please. Now we got it. Should we keep at it? I'm going to take one more, all right? Let's see what you think about this. Close your eyes and rest your chin on your fist. The boxing thinker. Like these? Exactly. What's up with me? Stand still. I'll take it again. 
I can't seem to get it right. Don't move. It's about time. Finally. We're all set. Wait. So, are you telling me the photos are developed? Or is that what you said to Stone? <laughs> Both. Just look. How much do you think each bicep weighs? A lot. But less than your tongue. <laughs> You're hilarious. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. Who's that guy? I know he's not a fan. You should have seen her face when she saw him. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse or putting it in? That's a decent picture, but it doesn't tell the truth. Huh? Of course it's the truth. I was there. Stone isn't as strong as he looks, and Moore certainly doesn't need him to lift her up. Look at his hand. Is he pulling something out of Moore's purse or putting it in? I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What was making her nervous? The boxing thinker, the boxing poet. Boxing just might turn out to be the intellectual sport of choice. I think she only smokes when she's nervous. What was making her nervous? Hmm. I've seen that matchbox before. Wait, that's him. Who? Mitchell, the surgeon. Seriously? <laughs> we got him. Not yet. Right. We still have to find him. Hey, pal. Did you hear what I just said? We need to keep looking at all those pictures. We need a clue that'll take us to Mitchell. Hey, see? There. Just like I was saying. Brawls aren't even the worst part of my job. Sure, you may take a beating, but at least you get the chance to defend yourself. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up, your back and neck feel stiff, your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. People were finally leaving the place. The bar was about to close. And I hadn't seen Mitchell go in or out. No choice. I see you took me up on my invitation. And you're smart. 
You knew not to come until my anti-fur regulars had all cleared out. I can't say no to good advice. Or good bourbon. Here's looking at you, Mr... Uh, what was your name? As far as I knew, La Iguana always stayed neutral. He played poker with Cassidy. But his joint was used as a gambling drop-off for O'Leary's operation. Did it make sense to keep faking it? Or was it too dangerous not to? Blackmore. John H. Blackmore. I knew it. Although your Texan isn't half bad. Let's just say I represent certain sports lobbies I'd rather not talk about. I understand. My pleasure, Mr. Blackmore. You're natural. You're even better at pool than poker. This is much easier. No one can cheat. <laughs> you barely flinched when Cassidy decided to teach that eagle a lesson. What do you want me to say? Between you and me, it's not the first time I find myself in this situation. Who doesn't have their own barber with a license to kill? Damn it. Well, nobody's perfect. Tell me, what do you really want with Cassidy? I just don't understand your motives. The truth is, I represent certain interests which make Desmond O'Leary my enemy. If you know anything about their rivalry, I rest my case. Don't worry about it. I was only curious. So, what about me? What do you want from me? No one comes to La Iguana just to drink and play pool. I'm looking for one of your regulars, Dr. Angus Mitchell. What for? I know he's got his own sport business, and I think a partnership could benefit us both. Sure. Tell you what, I'll talk to Mitchell. Come back tomorrow night. You don't understand. I have to talk to him, or else. Or else what? I don't think Cassidy would be too happy about the role his poker buddy plays in O'Leary's gambling operation. I'm sure you understand that. Son of a bitch. <laughs> All right. Give me your phone number, and I'll give you a call when Mitchell shows up. No. You're gonna call him right now, and you're gonna give him this message. But when you're sitting in your car all night, there's no way out. Your legs cramp up. Your back and neck feel stiff. Your entire body aches to be somewhere else. It's boring and repetitive. It's so bad that your thoughts spiral in a never-ending loop. Like when you're stuck in your car, on surveillance duty, The owner of La Iguana was supposed to tell Mitchell that a certain anteater was still alive, and that it was only a matter of time before he ratted him out. With a bit of luck, that would make him nervous enough to force his hand. Now all I had to do was follow him.
We'll be just fine, don't worry. Gil, stand guard right here. If the cat shows up, you know what to do. I'll be back in an hour. Looks like things won't be easy. Could I take him by surprise from over there? Although I don't know how I'd get there. I should be careful. When they gave me a beating, I could see he was kind of trigger happy. If she's still in love, why does she claim she hates him? What is she hiding?
I did mess up a guy's face with an extinguisher once, but this kind is too heavy for my current needs. Hmm, what does this place have to hide? According to this, the warehouse belonged to a Canadian import company. It could be an Ojibwa totem pole, in which case, the top animal would be a crane.
a dream catcher. It's supposed to protect children during the night, trapping all evil in its spider web. If I'm not mistaken, these are incense sticks, used in cleansing rituals. Everything seems to prove that Gil is a Native American, and I'm almost sure that the woman in the picture is his mother. Will I need help? Who would I call? Oh, uh, Wiggly here. You're what's Pier 36, the sixth sea facing warehouse coming in from Montgomery. John? Is that you? Meet me in an hour. What's going on? Bring your camera. I just gave you the scoop of your life. Smirnoff. Pier 36. Meet me in an hour. If you come in from Montgomery, it's the 6th sea-facing warehouse. What's going on? And bring the cavalry.
You know who'll always believe in you? Your mother. My mother never lost her faith in me. And I gave her plenty of reasons when I was a kid. It all started with something as stupid as keeping the change when she sent me for groceries. Then I started stealing fruit from the street stands. And finally, I turned to pickpocketing. Somehow, my mother managed to keep me in school until I got into college. But I never gave her reasons to believe in me then, either. I made new friends. The type of friends that convince you to do things that wouldn't make a mother proud. Then Pearl Harbor happened. I got drafted and sent to Europe. They told me killing was my moral duty, but I discovered it could be addictive. Not all victims were Nazis. But when I got back, I was treated like a pariah, a veteran outcast who never should have come back in the first place. And yet, my mother never ceased to... I also fought in the war. That's where I met Mitchell. They used me, like many of my people. And then they just tossed us aside. The first time Mitchell offered me to do this, I told him to take a hike. I wanted to get my act together, but I ended up begging him. I don't like Mitchell. I don't like the things he makes me do. I don't like that German rat either, but what I like least of all is myself. I don't like what I did during the war, and I don't like what I'm doing now. Do you know what it's like to kill a friend for the sake of the mission? Huh. But my mother, she always thought I'd make amends and start anew. Maybe it's time I did just that. It's number three. Hey. You back. It's all right. Don't be afraid, little girl. I'm 
gonna get you out of here, okay? Vita, no hurt. Hey. Vita, no hurt. Once upon a time... Once upon a time, there was a beautiful princess called... Brunhilda! Hi, my name is Brunhilda, and I'm very happy, said Brunhilda. And then Brunhilda, who had a beautiful name... Really beautiful! A really beautiful name ran into someone very special. Oh, who was it? A magical cat called John. I'm a magical cat, my name is John. <laughs> Hi, John the cat. I really like magical cats. Hi, Brunhilda. I'm gonna use my magical power to help you Make some delicious pies. Ha! 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 I love pies. Which is your favorite? Wow, that's a very hard question. <gasps> but John the Cat, it's the easiest question in the world. Let me show you how easy it is. My favorite pie is... Blueberry! <laughs> Whoa, Brunelda. Mm. That's exactly what I was about to say. Bird. John. Brunhinda. Front. Do play. Each look. Hi, bird. Why are you wearing that mask? Well, uh, gas. Uh, well, maybe we should get out of here. What do you think, bird? And what about you, Boonhead? Mm. Don't you think that? Thank you.